every time. Yeah. Uh, all right, there we go. Uh, hey, everybody. Uh, Charlie here. I'm joined today by Elliot. Elliot uh, had this awesome thread uh, on Twitter that I saw around TikTok stuff, and I've been following you for a while, and um, I'm super excited about it, uh, about what you had to say and about TikTok and a lot of other things. But I just really – I'm glad that you like we have this opportunity to chat, man. I think for what it's worth, um, one of the great advantages we have now that Twitter has allowed us is the democratization to the access of information and people. And there's a meritocracy. And to be honest, you have some really good things to say. And I have the de- the need to learn and to listen. And I really appreciate you coming on here and sharing it. So I- I'd love to start off if you can. Um, by the way, everybody, please go ahead and follow him. The description for in the description of this video is Elliot's stuff. His website's in there too. Go ahead and subscribe to what I have to do. Ask us questions as much as you can. We will try to be here to help you whether you catch us live or not. Um, I sure will respond to everything, and I'm sure Elliot won't mind either. If I we see sure how will. I do inside of Facebook groups, you're going to have no problem engaging with people and helping folks ultimately um, see more success and less stress in, in this year and with, with TikTok being your weapon of choice, at least in this space. So with that being said, Elliot, please give me a bit of an intro to who you are, what it is that you're doing and how you got to, the, how we got here from, from your perspective. Sure thing. So, uh, I mean, first of all, thank you so much for having me on. Really appreciate it. Uh, so my name's Elliot Padfield. I currently am most known for my work with both TikTok Organic and TikTok Ads. So my background, um, I launched and ran a number of my own substantial e-commerce stores um, over the last two or three years, Um, really started advertising on TikTok three years ago, super early, even before the self-serve platform was launched. Um, Since then, we've we've scaled that and a lot of colleagues asked me to start running ads. Um, Since then, we've we've become a full full service TikTok agency servicing brands everything from you know high high growth drop shipping brands all the way up to some of the big dtc brands um that i'm sure members of your audience have, have purchased from right on man i love that you got started before the self-service you've been in the game three years that's that's like like it's i got into Facebook. crazy like that yeah yeah i i got into facebook ads like 2013 i got into it before yeah. there was a pixel which to some people's like like when I say things like I remember before the internet, people are like, well, yeah. well, like, like, like it's crazy. And that's how my head goes nuts. And you're like, I was doing TikTok ads three years ago. Like, cool. that's amazing. Yeah. I love that. Honestly, I love that. I mean, the development of the platform since then has been absolutely incredible. Um, I mean, back when we started running ads, TikTok, even just as a platform to post content on, hadn't reached anywhere close to its peak. Um, and to think that now TikTok ads is a primary acquisition channel for a huge number of brands, it's incredible to see. Yeah, I love that. And I think, you know, that really steers us into the, in, in, in a great place because um, I am super bullish on the future. And, and I'm curious because of all the opportunities that you could have diving into um, and, and that you've made work, I guess my biggest question to start off with is, What's your why on TikTok? Like oh. a million places to go. Why that? Well, look, I mean, at the end of the day, I think it's about following the needs and the wants of the consumers. Um, I mean, right now, I think the big thing that makes TikTok more successful than anything else is its authenticity, right? Sure, I think short form content as a whole has a great deal of value, but that short video format uh, has a, a whole nother level of authenticity, much in the same way that Vine a number of years ago really captured the attention of people in the same way, because that limited time frame forced people to, to be creative, to be authentic. I think it's a whole, a whole new medium compared to long form video like YouTube. I think considering it to be the same, just shorter is, is a huge, huge under, an underestimation of the potential of the platform. Um, And at the end of the day, seeing both the creativity and the power, the messaging that people are putting in such short pieces of content, it's really showcasing the the, the need to to capture attention um, and and to continually provide value or provide entertainment to your audience. And I think that's what people absolutely love about the platform. And for us as marketers, it's all about tapping into those desires of the consumers and seeing how how we can help them out. 
I, I love that. I mean, I think you hit on a couple of things here that are really big. I mean, first off, I, I, I remember Vine and like cool. I, I, I had a big account. I was working at I had a side gig doing social media for Playboy Radio. Um, right. And we had a Vine account for one of the things. And it was very interesting, uh, to say the least. Uh, so I, I, I love that you hearken back a little part as part of my, you know, if social media marketer's soul got a little warm, but then again, my, and this is going back, my ICQ number was only six digits long, which right. doesn't probably mean anything to 20 people, but like, there's one guy that's like, oh my God. Uh, yeah. uh, but, but to all that being said, I think one of the things you really hit on and I love, and, and I haven't heard other people say it is, is that authenticity and the the use of that format to project content and in, in a different way and messaging in a different way, I think is tremendous. And with that being said, like one of the big things that I, I really interested, I mean, I love what you said, well, like TikTok is different than YouTube or other things, but like, why does TikTok, why does that format really push the authenticity in a way that other channels don't in, in the same format? Like what's the unfair advantage? Let me put it that way. Yeah, I mean, I think there's, there's two elements to it, really. I mean, first of all, the short amount of time really limits the amount of information you can throw into a piece of content. And if you're looking to add depth to the content, it has to come through creativity uh, and subtle techniques rather than just sort of sequentially throwing different pieces of information or, or different creative elements one after another. Um, and I think I think that's level one. Um, and I think the second level of it is the entire platform is predicated around the idea of just thinking of something, hitting record, and then posting it straight away. Um, I think that's the real beauty of the platform. You know, this isn't YouTube where we're recording off platform, editing, going through multiple layers of revisions. This is a platform that just rewards, you know, communicating from the heart. And I think in a, in a social media landscape where people are, are tuned out to this corporate feel, this perfect feel, the ability to really interact with people almost face-to-face -face like friends is really what makes the platform so successful. And I think that combined with, um, you know, obviously people not going outside in 2020, I think that actually had a huge impact, especially on the long-term growth of TikTok, as it was a beautiful way to basically replicate that face-to-face -face contact via a virtual medium. I love that. I think you're, you're dead on, you know, the, the ability to have those relationships, you know, as an old radio guy, one of the things that I found was people that listen to the show forever, they thought they were like, it felt like a friend, right? Like cool. it feels like you have these meaningful relationships with people that you might never see. And I, I love that with the authenticity that required and the immediacy of the data uh, or of the, of the, of the flow of the content inside of, inside of TikTok, like it makes it a really interesting way to express that stuff. I think one of, and, and this might be parlaying into another question, um, but before we get to that, like one of the pain points I'm seeing for a lot of brands and I've been in D2C for, I don't know, a decade now um, is how to take their, advertising how to take their marketing into a space that's built on this authentic person-to-person -person relationship and i'm curious as somebody that has been there both organic and paid what are you seeing that i, I don't want to necessarily know what people are doing right because right is easy to replicate what i want to know is what are people doing wrong what mistakes can we avoid we learn far more from our failures than we ever do from our wins and i'm really curious to know like are you seeing people struggle that always do the same thing and that there are mistakes people can avoid in the mentality or the approach? Yeah, I, mean, I think at a very high level, it's a strategy issue. So for so many social media marketers uh, and social media managers, they're jumping right in, they're looking at the platform and they're being tasked by, by the companies they work for to produce content on TikTok. And on the surface, they just see what everyone sees. They see trends, they see music, they see short form video. Um, and they don't really look past that. And they don't take the time to sit down and understand what makes the platform so successful. And as I said, authenticity is a big thing, but equally personality. 
Um, brands need personality. And I think actually in, in 2022, this stretches way beyond the borders of TikTok. Um, but you'll notice the biggest brands all have very unique personalities on the platform. And the personification of the brands is absolutely critical. So the biggest issue I see is brands thinking that TikTok is just a distribution channel for content, uh, mm. where they can sort of repackage creative or content that's fit, fitting on other platforms and repurpose it and, and get new reach, not understanding that it's an entire new medium. And I think this really circles back to the very first thing I said, this is not video that's short. It is its entire own medium and requires a, a platform context native approach to, to producing content. And I think so many people don't realize that. Um, and as soon as you get over that hurdle of understanding what your brand's personality is and then how that can reflect into content, it's possible to create branded content that feels authentic um, and, and really builds that connection with the audience. And that's what most consumers are looking for right now. I think you're dead right. And, and, and to be honest, that's something I got wrong for a long time. I was literally like I tasked people with like, okay, we're going to make Instagram reels and it's going to go to Pinterest idea pins. It's a reel first. And then like my assistant does this for me right now. I'm 100% guilty. Like literally I was on the phone with him last night using Publer to sure. distribute, distribute between YouTube shorts, Pinterest idea pins and TikTok uh, in one platform, which makes it really easy for him because I build in Instagram reels because Full disclosure, I'm banned from TikTok on my personal phone for life. Right. Um, but that, that's a whole other side. Note. So I open the door. I'll explain that for one second. Um, I had a, I have a band. I found that I could get plays for my band's music on TikTok by getting views on the content. So we're a punk band. I just made political TikToks and just put my music as the bed, political memes, and just blasted them out like 20, 30 a day. And I got that's flagged great. to the point where I can't use the platform anymore. Uh, but I have a burner phone that I manage and I use the online stuff and all that fun things. Well, all that aside, I made that mistake of very much treating it as it's a distribution channel of vertical content. And I think a lot of people made that mistake with Snapchat a few years ago. And, and what I would say is what I'm seeing in the strategy is Snapchat failed to deliver on what TikTok can do. And cool. I think a lot of Facebook marketers and a lot of growth marketers looked at TikTok in a bearish way. And I'll speak to myself. I was wrong two years ago. Um, I was probably wrong six months ago. Who knows uh, uh, where my position was, but I, I've changed my mind. But I looked at TikTok as the next Snapchat. And cool. I think I was really wrong in that. And the mistakes of making one piece of content and trying to distribute it everywhere um, I think is an easy way to get some reach. I mean, it, it's not wrong, but I always challenge people that like good enough won't move a mountain, right? And sure. I, I, I love the idea that, that TikTok being native and really pushing the feel of that platform is being so key. And so yeah. I guess... One of the big things that I'd love to say, highlighting what's, what, what mistakes people make, taking that into an action item for something that people can do right, how do you see people very effectively taking that brand identity into the platform? Because I'll be honest with you, like whether I got a CBD brand, I got a protein shake brand, I got a women's clothing brand, I got a whatever, right? I mean, those happen to all be brands I have, but that's, that's an aside. Uh, taking that marketing that we've really grown into appreciating and taking that into this space where you have to have that identity. I feel like cool. performance media and then identity branding are very different skill sets. And if you had to give some advice for a strategy for people to execute on that, I'd be really curious because I think that is the biggest pain point for people to wrap their minds. Cause I think so many people are like, how do we take our Facebook and our YouTube and our Instagram and then change it? So it's Instagram or so that's TikTok friendly. Cool. But I agree with you that that's just wrong. 
Yeah, I mean, look, I, I think there's almost two layers to this. At a very high level, it's about, once again, understanding the, the people that you're talking to rather than just looking at it as content. So, so you know, consumer and audience-driven content rather than content-driven content. So it's the same thing, right? I mean, like, if you look at, let's say, a small business on, on Instagram, it, it's very easy to go online, read some SEO-optimized article, and it's like, yeah, you need to be posting four times a day or whatever. And you've got some local bakery that's po posting pictures of cupcakes four times a day and then wondering why they're not blowing up and getting three million followers, right? Because they're taking that content-driven approach. It's how can I be big on Instagram? It's not understanding, okay, who are my customers and what are they actually looking for? It's the same thing on YouTube. I see this quite a lot. So a lot of people uh, are always thinking, actually, I mean, it's the same thing on TikTok. It's, um, oh, the Instagram algorithm favors this, or, or the YouTube algorithm, you know, reduces the visibility of videos that do this. But at the end of the day, the algorithm is pretty simple. What people want, it will show them. And all, all of these algorithms, all they are are just ways of trying to estimate whether an individual liked a piece of content or not. So if you make content that is human first, the algorithm will fall into place. If you're trying to hack the algorithm and cheat the algorithm, things are always going to be changing and you're always going to be trying to keep up, keep up and then eventually you'll end up being shadow banned or suspended from the platform. But if you take that human first approach, then you completely bypass all of that. So really it's about understanding, and especially on TikTok, so much of it is about emotion, right? So controversy, emotion, the shock factor, that's what really makes engaging content on the platform. So when you're producing content for Instagram, you're often thinking about value, you're often thinking about you know the, the the lifestyle of the consumer on tiktok think about the emotions latch onto that and produce content that, that feels relatable on an emotional level to your audience i'll have you know you did that in exactly 59 seconds so if you are making a lot of tiktoks your internal clock is fucking <laughs> perfect uh for what it's Love worth it. I, I i'm literally making a note like my assistant's gonna make that a tiktok for this thing like absolutely that is fantastic just just Bravo to you. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I, I just isn't a side because I'm a nerd. Uh, no, I love that. I love that. And, and I say that stuff to people all the time. I, I think that there is ground to be won by sure. hacking an algorithm, right? Sure. You can do a bad job, but work hard and get somewhere. Sure. And, and I'll make this statement, and I'm curious to see what you think of it. You can cheat your way to 5 million. Yes. You can't work 10 times harder to get to 50. Cool. So hacking your way to success inherently limits your ability to be successful. And because your business model is predicated on disrespecting your business partner, your upside is inherently limited and you'll eventually work harder and harder and harder to do worse and worse and worse. Yeah, 100%. I mean, look, I'm a big believer in systems and sustainable growth. Um, it, it's the foundation of, of every business that I work on personally and the businesses that I invest in. Um, and to be honest, yeah, you're 100% right. So, you know, I've worked very closely. I've got good friends that are verified, multiple millions of followers on TikTok. Um, and it's exactly the same thing. Those who have good relationships with the platform and understand that human-driven approach are always better off long term. Their growth is sometimes less quick, but there's more longevity. And at the same time, their audience has way more value. Now, you know, if you're an influencer that's just riding the hype train of TikTok and selling, you know, influencer placements for, to marketers that don't really have a clue what they're doing, sure, hack the algorithm, make your quick buck, and then go home. Um, but I think especially for brands that are really looking to optimize for conversions and aren't just looking for generic brand awareness, then, yeah, the, the question you need to ask yourself is what is the quality, the quality of the audience? Uh, and at the end of the day, if you are producing content that is only tangentially related to the brand and it's just, you know, hopping around to see whatever gets engagement, you're not going to see the bottom line result. And I think, you know, in so many companies, the, the social media managers are so disjointed from anyone that even has access to that attribution data. Um, it, it doesn't get trickled down. And so you see these huge brands running basically huge resources into these accounts um, that are for very little more than brand awareness, when actually with a much cheaper and much more effective approach, you could be making a thousand times more in terms of your actual ROI. Yeah, I love that. And, and, and there's one bottom point to that too that I want to make and see your thoughts. Um, follower count and engagement 
has fuck all to do with profitability. 100%. Like, yeah, I mean, th- th- there's absolutely no doubt about it. And that applies to, to anything on social media. Um, you know, same thing with YouTube. You can see tiny creators that have, you know, small, small audiences that are making huge amounts of money from, from that high value audience. Same thing on TikTok, right? Like I, you can very easily see a brand that will get 500,000 views on a video. And I know for a fact, we'll make more money than another brand that gets 2 million. Um, it, it's all about identifying and nurturing the right kind of prospects. Um, and yeah, you're right. I think the the objectives that so many social media managers and agencies are particularly notorious for this, the, the metrics, the KPIs that they measure themselves against are entirely irrelevant. Um, you know, for, for most things with organic, once again, if you are trying to drive for conversions, then conversions is the only metric that matters. Same thing, right? If you're running ads, I mean, no one cares about click-through rate for, for, for the end client. It's what is the ROAS and how much money are you making them? Um, and I think that the fact that both clients and agencies are still getting away with all of these strange KPIs and metrics is is an absolute joke. Yeah, no, I love that. It's funny. I, I just posted a thing uh, on, on Twitter. It was 13 hours ago. And I said, if your agency tells you that the CTR of a Facebook ad is important, oh, fire them tweet. immediately. <laughs> The future of your that. dreams and your employees it. and your family shouldn't be trusted to people who have no fucking clue what they're doing. And it's funny, yeah. this guy, Will, Ecom Will, shout out to Ecom Will, said, this dude is the king of bad takes. Sounds like <laughs> Will is losing clients. Uh, that's fine with me. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, that was actually my tweet. So you just, I don't, it was funny. This guy literally uh, just retweeted it. I saw it on my feed. Yep. Uh, I don't know if you saw me distracted for a second. I was like, wait a minute. You just... <laughs> Like it was, it was perfectly <laughs> time. It was a beautiful yep. thing. Beautiful thing. Um, I love that. So what I would really love to kind of finish up here with and, and give some time, because I, I want to appreciate, you know, your time. And this has been really great. And I, I'd love to also have you maybe on direct consumer coffee shop sometime. I show with some other folks. Cool. What I would love to know is where do you see the future? So, what do you think the future of TikTok is going to be for growth marketing, um, both organic and paged, yeah. whatever, however you want to take that? I just, as a leading thinker in the field, what is, uh, where do you think this thing is going? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, right now, it, engagement on the platform is all about what's tied to those emotions. And, and it's a very, very transient platform. I think the future that we're going to see in the next six to 12 months is real value driven content. I think TikTok is going to eat more and more into that YouTube market share. I think there is huge room for super concise cooking tutorials, makeup tutorials, that kind of content. Um, And I think it is also incredibly brandable content. You're going to see a much, much better ROI. Um, And I think, look, once again, right, all of these platforms, they go through different stages. You know, in, in the early days of Facebook, no one would have assumed that, that you know, your, your mom would be on Facebook. Um, and it's, it's very much the same situation. I don't think anyone now can imagine a TikTok where your For You page is filled with actually valuable content, but it will be. And I think brands need to seriously start considering, aside from their standard emotion-driven content, starting to sprinkle some of that value content in um, and, and start to help make that wave on the platform. I think that's where the real big opportunity is, especially with organic TikTok. I love that. Um, and in the paid media side, you yeah. know, I'll tell you as a Facebook guy, and, and you know, I've my, my clients and students and, and I have you know, done over a billion in revenue in, in Facebook, which is a, a fucking yeah. crazy number, but I've spent <laughs> hundreds of millions of dollars. I, I've been in the game long enough that, you know, I used to spend a million a day. It's a longevity thing, right? Like I've just been here forever. So I just happen to be some stupid vanity metric. Um, But I'll tell you, as as Facebook marketer first, I'm looking at the platform and it feels to me like kind of like Facebook 2016. And what I mean by that is it feels like the attention is underpriced. It feels like the ad formats are limited enough for you to specify on doing one task really well. 
And it feels like it's easy enough for people to do a C plus job and make a lot of money. That being said, as more and more people move into it, my biggest concern is that those unfair advantages will go away for a lot of people. And I think that I see a lot of folks who are, you know, internet gurus that were selling shit advice five years ago on Facebook, selling the same shit advice, but now just replaced Facebook with TikTok in their dashboards yeah. and are literally just selling the same garbage uh, over and over again. And, and my point to all of that is on a paid media side, what do you think the future looks like? And maybe I'll give you two options here, or, or you can take a third one, you know, option C, your own thing, because I'm wrong on both. Uh, of either A, it being, uh, I think we're in a great place right now, but in the next two or three years, we're going to hit some maturity where you're going to have to be good to excel. B, um, the sheer nature of the platform and their you know, unit economics as a business, because they're not necessarily a profitable publicly traded company, allow them to have this unfair advantage for a very long time. Or... Um, Something else. Like, I, I feel like those are the two hyperbolic things. And yeah. I'll say this, Alex P, or hey, I'm Alex P with her wonderful uh, newsletter, the uh, No Best Practices. We had a conversation about it, and, and we kind of netted out at the idea that because I, on one of those, I won't, I won't, I won't tent the waters, but I'm, I'm really curious to see cool. what you think about it, being somebody that is so in the weeds yourself. Yeah, I mean, I think like at a very high level, that competitive advantage will slowly fizzle out. But I think it's I think it's deeper than that. I mean, look, you're right. At the moment, anyone who understands basic advertising can make a pretty good return on the platform. I think that is going to begin to get harder. But the one big thing, as much as we all have complaints about the TikTok ad platform, they are hugely committed to improving the platform. I mean, literally on a week by week basis, there's a huge amount of changes being made, everything from targeting to bidding. Um, attribution at the moment is, is pretty weak. I think that will improve. Um, and so I think, you know, this is the one thing that the gurus just can't get right. Unlike Facebook, where, you know, you can sort of get away with trying to sell the same tried and tested tactics and, you know, enough people might make some money that you can get some decent testimonials. With TikTok, you know, sure, CPMs may rise for, for certain bids. Um, but then at the same time, because of new options with targeting, you know, you can now target hashtags. Um, you can now entirely change the way you set up your campaign on a week by week basis. So, yes, if you are still using the same C plus techniques that are working right now, you are going to be priced out of the market. It's going to be the same deal as Facebook. But if you're actually invested in this and you're keeping track of what's going on and continually iterating on testing out new features rather than just, you know, reading out of your media buyer's handbook, then you, you're going to be successful on the platform for a, for a good another few years. I love that. And, and with that being said, I mean, I read your big thread and I'll, I'll try to maybe tag it in, in some section. I'll put the link to that here. We don't need to get into too much. Um, but if you can give a simple idea of maybe your ethos for the strategic future, um, I, I would I would love to know. And, and by the way, just to answer, to give context, I my prediction for the future of TikTok is that um, I feel like because they're not profit driven and because there is also this like nefarious back end potential need for the Chinese government X, Y, and Z. Like there is a potential that like the, the prices could just remain low. Um, but ultimately we don't know the answer to that, but we're a couple of years out of even facing that problem. So I, I totally agree with you. Um, but yeah, so 50,000 foot level, super simple, digestible fashion if you were to give a best practice for D to C performance media strategy for TikTok, I mean, obviously everybody's situation is different and I do not believe anybody has a copy and paste solution. Sure. Um, I would love to know, not just structure, architecture, whatever, that's completely irrelevant. Ethos, mentality. Like if you had to give a 90, an elevator pitch on how to do it right. I would love cool. to know that because I think that's honestly like you work in TikTok. How do we get it into a minute so that it's actually a value-based piece of content, right? I I'd love to know what that is. 
Cool. So I think the biggest thing is understanding that consumers these days are looking at brands as the people behind the brands. And TikTok is a platform where you can really embrace that. There's no need to maintain this corporate facade that we're so used to doing on, on social media. Understand that, that you can break down that wall and communicate from human to human. And that's where so much of the power is on the platform. So I think, yeah, at a real 50,000 foot view, it's about understanding what your brand really is so you know we're in an age now where you can't just have some some fancy graphics and, and an expensive copywriter to build yourself a brand it has to have authenticity it has to have longevity um, and if it's not, then people will see right through it. So often it's about taking a real foundational approach of understanding, OK, as a brand, who are we? Who do we sell to? What do we stand for? And how can we represent that in a way that makes people feel connected with? Because the second you start connecting with people, people will start buying. Yeah, I, I love that. Um... And again, I think you nailed that. And you're, you're good. You're good. I think that was 57 <laughs> seconds, man. I'm, I'm impressed. You got this internal clock. I don't know. Pretty fucking good, man. I got to say, I'm impressed. Uh, I love that. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree with that. I think that that's a big, big piece. And, and people have to understand what the platform is built to do, what the business objective of that platform is. I think one of the biggest mistakes people make is they take inventory and demand-based platform strategies and they apply it to an optimized CPM environment. You can't run Facebook ads like email. You can't run TikTok ads like YouTube. You can't run television media. Uh, you can't run television, you know, in the same way you would do performance. Like every platform has its own specificity. And there's a reason why there are experts that are specialized in different things. And I see so many people making that mistake. Uh, I mean, one of the biggest mistakes we're talking about before is CTR. If you're a Google person, CTR is massive important. But yeah. if, if, if you're building a content-driven user experience platform, that's one of the biggest mistakes you can make. And, yeah. you know, um, I, I saw, I'm, I'm friends with the guys from Triple Whale and I love them. And, and Rob is a good buddy yeah. of mine. I saw their whale mail came out this week. And this guy that has me blocked on Twitter made a, made a take of things that are important. And I think it's a great example of everything that you can do wrong. Um, and I'll, I'll leave it at that to try not to throw too much fire. Cause I'm trying to be a nicer guy. I, I you know, sure. I have a reputation of being uh, aggressive. And we were talking about before this, there's a, uh, there's a fella that is in everywhere trying to talk shit. And like, I, I want to be above and beyond. So I won't, I won't go too much deeper, but I think that, that makes a really good point. Cause all, ultimately it's about managing your relationship with your partners. Yes. TikTok has a business objective. Facebook has a business objective. Google does. Amazon does. Everybody does. And so if you can manage your strategy to meet their business objective and then ultimately align that with your bottom line, it's very hard to fail. Um, so I 100% agree. I, I was going to ask you just maybe before we go real quick, like three questions. Yeah. I don't know why I put four. Three, here we go. Three, three, three questions on just some like hot fire, just, just something. On, on TikTok ads, because like, cool. let's get into some actual execution real quick. Um, targeting. Do you feel that broad targeting on TikTok is strong enough for people to use, or are you a fan of niche uh, interest in hashtag and stuff? Sure, I'm a super big fan right now of broad targeting. Um, I think that may change over time, but right now there is one thing that the TikTok does very well, and it's recommending content to people. And that same algorithm is the algorithm that drives ad targeting. And so, for as long as people keep scrolling through their for you page and getting content they love, I'm willing to trust it with my ads. I love it. In the same way, I, I believe this. Uh, TikTok, in my theory, TikTok is a D is a is a reverse engineered Facebook platform. And no matter what, in an optimized CPM environment, if your business model is to keep people on the platform for as long as possible, then your algorithm is designed to show people content they want to see. The, the yes. more effort you put into paying extra to prevent the platform being able to do that, the harder and harder it is going to be for you to succeed. And I don't know it for fact, but I know it for fact. Like, I'm pretty sure if you layer on targeting on TikTok, your costs are going to go up. Just because that inventory guac is extra, right? Yeah, massive. So second thing, uh, Spark ads versus dynamic. I think that's a sure. huge question that I'm seeing. I don't know the answer. So <laughs> I, if I got you for 30 seconds, can I get one? 
Yeah, I mean, look, I think it hugely depends on, on the individual. I've seen incredible results in Spark ads. I think they have to be executed in the correct way. Um, and, and you've really got to have a synergy between your media buyers and your creative team um, and making sure that, that the content that you're pushing is in line with your objectives. But I think if it works for your brand and you can get that aligned, Spark ads is definitely something worth investing the time into. I love that. I mean, and I'll be honest with me, for me personally, like a lot of what I'm doing, and this brings me to my last question is, and it's funny, our, our, but our friend Michael ripped me apart in a, in a, in a TikTok Facebook group for, for suggesting this as a strategy. And, and, and I'm just coming with it with what works for me. I'm posting everything organically. I'm seeing what the platform prefers. And then the organic content that does well, that also looks like it aligns to business objectives. I'm throwing media behind and adding a CTA button. Um, I think that's great. That, I, I, I'm recommending that to people substantially okay. right now. I mean, look, I, I started out very, very he heavy on paid media and never really touched organic. Um, and then people started coming to me and they were like, there's got to be a more effective way to test creative than, than spending huge amounts of money. Um, and yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, ads need to be platform native. You know, we're, we're not producing content that, that is at all different from organic content. And I would say with 99% of the campaigns we're running, what works for organic works for ads. So yeah, go for it. Man, awesome, cool. I felt so good about that. And then like I got ripped to shreds and I was like, I don't know, man, performance. Like why not let organic do the creative testing for you? If it works, it works. Like well, look, focus this is the thing. Yeah, there's so many people arguing over strategies and methods. At the end of the day, the barrier to entry right now is so low try it test it it works for me it works for you so you know that's the end of the day i love it i love it um that being said last question real quick okay. do you think that having a strong organic presence is a necessity or value add to paid media my point here is i know folks that do not have the bandwidth to devote a native TikTok. They, they, they don't have a 23 year old kid they can hire right now to just crush TikTok for them. But they have a media department where they can have creative and make, make ads. Is it, do you think there is a correlation strong enough in a good organic versus this other methodology we're talking about just posting everything and then elevating what works? Yeah. Is it worth, is there a lift to having good organic for your page? In my experience, yes, there is. But at the same time, look, I think ads can work incredibly well independently as long as you can nail the creative. Um, and I think, you know, if it's if it's if that's your only option, I would still go ahead and run ads standalone. I think that's much better than missing out on this stage of the platform. Um, but at the same time, if you have that bandwidth to be able to be producing organic content and investing in it at the same rate at which you are your paid media. I would say it's huge. Once again, it's about authenticity. It's about building that connection. And so if you can effectively streamline brand awareness into, into that campaign, I mean, effectively, you know, that's the way we're seeing it, right? Organic content is that real top of funnel brand awareness. And then just when people are ready to buy, you deliver them that ad with that direct CTA and push them right through to the conversion. I love it. I love it. Well, I mean, hey, look, I selfishly used the last couple of minutes just to answer my own notions because I'm diving way the fuck in. And I just wanted to make sure, like, hey, look, if, if, am I just going down a fucking pit of despair or am I on a pretty decent path? Feels like, hey, maybe I get a B minus and we'll see what happens. I'll take that any day. I take that any day. I welcome on the challenges and the failures I'm going to make. But at least I know, hey, look, we're supposed to be heading west and, and I'm not going north, south or east. So I must be doing something right. I'll take sure. that. I'll take that. With that being said, man, I really appreciate your time. I, 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 I'm really thankful for what you're doing. I know personally, I'm going to try to, you know, I'm following you and, and I'm, everybody wants to get into this space. I know that I'm getting into it. And as much as I do in paid media, I'm also, you know, I have equity spots and businesses and I'm a teacher and I'm trying sure. to go out there myself and make as many mistakes as I possibly can to help others not make them. And, I really appreciate the time and effort to help give people some direction. And I'd love to talk with you some more. What I'd like to do to end with this is first off myself saying thank you and leave the last word to you just to say like anything you want to promote, any place people are going to find you, any last notes you want to give somebody an ethos thing, like 
I'll leave it with this. Thank you very much. And the last word is yours, man. I really appreciate it. Well, I mean, first of all, thank you so much for having me on. I absolutely love sharing value like this. I mean, this is 100% why I do it. If you want to get more value like what we've been discussing today, I basically write about this stuff nonstop over on my Twitter at Elliot Padfield. Uh, you know, we cover everything from broader DTC growth uh, all the way into, into the nitty gritty. You know, if you're really looking to get started with TikTok ads or organic, you know, in the next few months, um, there's some really strong frameworks on there. Um, and then from there, you can find all the other links. If you want to work with me directly, we're sort of onboarding clients for both our paid media and organic services right now. Um, so yeah, if you've got an established brand, we'd be more than happy to, to help you achieve those goals if you don't have that internal bandwidth. But otherwise, yeah, man, I really appreciate you being here and what a great chat. I, I, I enjoyed the hell out of it. I really appreciate yeah. it. I got to, uh, I'm going to go have some lunch. I'm going to go digest some of this stuff. And then um, I am going to throw up a bunch of spark ads today. I'm, I'm, I'm super excited. Sounds so good. here's what I'm doing, by the way, is I have my assistant basically taking all my reels and he's posting them as TikToks like every three, four hours. And then any yep. one of them that gets X amount of reach, I'm, I'm throwing a CTA on. And hey, look, I got my cost per acquisition down from 60 bucks to 12. Um, so it. it's working for me. Uh, exactly. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. I will see you later on the internet. And um, yeah, man, I'm going to be bothering you about some other stuff, dude. I really appreciate it. And I think Absolutely. there might be also some other things where we can align some things because I got some gray area work that I need to figure out. And you might cool. be able to help me out. So I'll talk to you later, my man. I appreciate it. See you next time. Thank you. See you next time.